Hello, I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got to answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. As the austerity knife cuts deeper, the outcry spreads. Even as the holiday season approaches, governments across Europe are forced to play Scrooge by seeking more cuts in their pension programs. The financial crisis has intensified what's long been a simmering problem. What to do about aging populations with ever fewer workers supporting ever more pensioners living longer. Trying to defuse the demographic time bomb and cut budgets to avert a financial meltdown, governments are further raising the retirement age and reining in benefits. A leaked European Commission draft white paper on pension reform wants EU member states to scrap the mandatory retirement age and encourage people to work longer with more programs like lifelong learning. As unions threaten more strikes in the new year, the showdown over pensions isn't likely to go away anytime soon. Now, wired into this edition of the network is here from Brussels, Laszlo Andor, the European Commissioner for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Claudia Mene, Confederal Secretary of ETUC, that's the European Trade Union Confederation that represents 84 organizations in 36 countries. And Philippe de Buck, Director General of Business Europe, which represents 41 business federations in 35 countries. Let's begin with a question for all of you, starting with the Commissioner. In Europe, there are about right now four workers for every pensioner. And that ratio will fall to two to one by 2060. How fearful are you of a pension system collapse that could actually bring down the euro? Well, in fact, this is the last period when governments have to act uh, to implement uh, pension reforms. The challenge is not entirely new, but it's uh, obvious that the crisis had a big impact. It aggravated the situation, which was to some extent predictable. So we are helping the member states to design okay. and implement good pension reforms. Okay. And uh, this uh, is going to be on the agenda, okay, despite the fact that in many member states it has already started. Okay, Commissioner, thank you. Uh, let's go to Claudia. Do you expect yeah. a collapse and when? There's no collapse because what we have to fight for is that those who are in the labor market have the opportunity to con continue their work until the legal pension age. So unemployment is raising and we have to fight for this first and then think about cuts in the pension system. Okay. Philippe, what's your opinion on this? It's not to cut in the pension system, it's to safeguard the pension system by prolonging the activities of the older workers, as we call them. Uh, there is no way out. Uh, the life expectation has risen by two years and a half each decade. So we have to review okay. in order to safeguard the system. Okay, Philippe, I think, I think the most, probably one of the most salient questions here about the pensions is how much, how high to raise the retirement age. Some people say it should be as high as 75 years old. Commissioner, what do you think? Well, it's not the European Commission who will tell each member state uh, how high the retirement age you should be. You don't tell be. them, but you advise them. What would you advise them? The advice is to make a link, a very clear link between the increase in life expectancy and uh, the increase in the retirement age. It should not be an automatic link because it's also embedded in the demographic reality of each country, the labor okay. market pattern, the financial situation, the design of the pension system. But this link is very, very important. If we live longer, okay. we also have to work longer. Right. Claudia, what do you think? If we live longer, we have to work longer, don't we? No, the thing is that only 50% of workers reaching the legal uh, retirement age. So. There are between the group between 55 and 64, only 43% are active on the labor market. And we have to take care that they have opportunity to reach the legal pension age. Philippe, your opinion? There are two elements. Uh, Claudia is right. We have to push uh, those who uh, step out of the market earlier to stay in the market. But I think we have to move that magic age from 65 to 67. Okay, 67. That sounds very conservative. There are suggestions that the mandatory retirement age be scrapped. What do you think? Yeah, as far as I know, it's related to some professions, and we think that there are professions in, still in the labor market who needs uh, earlier retirement, like in the transport worker, or we know the construction workers, they cannot scope with a retirement age until 60, 64, or even 67. Shouldn't there be a Europe-wide pension system? Some people are urging that, that there should be 
a, a general across the board pension system or should there actually be maybe a pension tracking service so that people who work in different countries be able to uh, know really how much they're going to be getting in pensions? Uh, Commissioner. Well, there is already a pension tracking service for uh, the pay as you go systems, and it's working quite well. There's a good administrative cooperation between the relevant uh, uh, agencies in this area. Where we have to follow up is the private sector. Philip, what about on the private sector? How are we dealing with no, that right now? It is, of course, what we call the pillar two and the pillar three. They are the private funded pension system which are key uh, in order to complement the legal pensions but what you mentioned is really important it's to give the safeguard to the people when they move from one country to another that they can maintain the pension rights that they have built up but also that they have a visibility in the country they are working okay. that they will get the pension but what about contributions how much should we be raising contributions now to support this pay as you go system commissioner well, in order to rebalance the system, uh, you can uh, uh, adjust the retirement age, but also you can adjust the uh, contributions depending okay. on competitiveness. So right. all these parameters have to be looked at at the same time. But Claudia, we've got, we've got a lot of protest on the labor side about yes. raising contributions. What's your position on that? Now, we need to have a system which is based on solidarity and is not dictated by the market. Therefore, we need a safe guard in the first pillar and not to transfer the responsibility to others. Well, Philippe, I think, I think a lot of businesses are kicking and screaming that they've got to pay sometimes about two-thirds uh, two of these contributions for these pensions. What do you think? Yeah, but of course they pay the contribution, but now the issue is in order to raise the revenue of the pension schemes, you do it all by raising the contribution and that is not a good idea uh, as of today, or you enlarge the number of people who contribute and that is what we have to work. It's all about activating the labor market and put people more at work and longer. Claudia, I think the average employee, the average worker has, has to realize that, that the the state and, and companies perhaps can't pay all of their retirement. Yeah, but for saving privately, you have to have decent income and you have to have a salary which can give you the possibility to have private uh, provisions. And what we see is now cut in pensions, but also cut in wages. And we see also a raising of precarious work, which is not covered by the social system. Okay, how much more do we uh, worry and fear that there could be more uh, labor unrest on this that could actually shake what governments are trying to do in, in restructuring their, their pension programs, Commissioner? Well, uh, in some of the member states, the pension reforms still play a role in the general stabilization. And of course, when it comes at the same time with uh, wage adjustment or wage cuts uh, um, and streamlining the public sector, of course, uh, altogether, it's very difficult, especially to apply fairness. But I think most of the governments have a very clear intention to to adjust uh, in a most possible fair way. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a European responsibility to get out of the recession as soon as possible so that such emergency situations do not prevail anymore. Philippe, how much do you fear more labor unrest, more fighting that could actually bring down some of these reform co programs? Well, uh, I hope not, not too much. I can perfectly understand that it creates some tensions. But in some countries, uh, reforms will, were pushed through in, in a very close cooperation and it went well in some others you needed uh, some clashes but at the end what I'm pleased okay. to look at that is that the decisions were taken and that is uh, what is important because we need it by all means to review the pension system financial okay. crisis, crisis or not. Thank you Philippe and Claudia how much are labor unions trade unions ready to fight now to keep their ground to to prevent them from having to give too much when it comes to these pension reforms? So it's one question, it's immediate cuts, they are completely opposing, and when it comes to structural changes, it's, it depends on the countries. You saw it in UK now, but yeah, there will be also tensions in other countries, but it will depend how much the trade union is involved and how deep the structural reforms will be, and therefore it's not predictable how many unrest there will be in the future. Claudia, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. That's all the time we got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Laszlo Andor, Claudia Mene, and Philippe Debuck. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network. <laughs>